guys what's going on welcome back to the last module of this amazing TOEFL ITP course which took such a long time you know this TOEFL ITP listening course which took me such a long time to prepare and get out there and then finally with all the research and all the audios and things that I finally gathered up I said you know what I have just enough to give you guys an amazing ITP course and again, this is only part A. So obviously you guys are uh, watching me right now. This isn't the end of ends. Uh, this is just the end of part A. And then there's part B, which you're going to see, right? And that's about four modules. And then there's part C, which will be about four modules too. So again, it was a very, it's, it's a very long course, probably the longest of all three that I have out right now. Uh, but at the same time, I'm just so, so grateful that you guys been able to battle through Okay, this uh, wonderful ITP listening course with all the different techniques and the ways and the and the ways in which I actually explained and stuff. So, in this last module, two video module, okay, I'm gonna be breaking down how to understand, you know, uh, how to understand uh, what is it, dialogues with special verbs, right? And so, what I'm going to be discussing today is just that. All right, it's going to be relatively quick too. This isn't going to be a long video. All right. And so I'm very, very happy again that you guys have tuned in and stayed with me this entire course. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're understanding to a certain extent. And with all the practicing and stuff, you should be able to get that score that you just so desired. Right. So, with that being said, here we go. We have verbs that indicate, you know, uh, some causes, you know, that someone else did something like an activity something that uh had gone so in a you know in a conversation something that happened before or potentially after right so you need to understand this is called a cajade i think it's called a cajative or a cajative i can't remember i rarely say these types of verbs but you know what you must understand the verbs that perform action and so if i hurry up and scan through have get make let used to those are basically the verbs that we're going to be talking about in this video. So again, what it comes down to, people, is you need to understand exactly what these verbs are and how they perform a specific action, right? So let's begin by diving into them. The first one is have. So have someone do something. So normally in a dialogue, you would hear someone say, hey, you should have Dave, you know, fix the car. You know, like Dave had the mechanic fix his car or have something done, such as Dave had his car fixed, right? But we don't know by who. So the cajated verb that indicates that one person asks or pays another to do something, right? Uh, and again, the subject of the sentence, Dave, does not perform the action. In the first sentence, the mechanic does. But in the second sentence, the unnamed person, which I just said, does but we don't know what their name is so again this is how you use this type of verb have in these sentences right um i remember there were so many times about four years ago i would teach you know a specific dialogue where there was someone in regards to a girl having her bike fixed and it fell right in this line these types of special verbs all right so let's go on to get so get someone to do something, such as Jerry got his cousin to cut his hair. His cousin is performing the action. Now get something done, Jerry got his hair cut. We don't know who this unnamed person is, right? We just know that Jerry got his hair cut. It's kind of like, you know, some people say, oh, or say, Arsenio, you got your hair cut. And I think I'm actually growing my hair back. But anyways, you know, they say, hey, Arsenio, you got your hair cut. Now, obviously we do not, I got something done, but we don't know exactly who performed the action, right? So that's why we're not using it in the context such as get someone to do something. It's more just getting something done. All right, so let's go to make. Again, like I said, this is going to be a relatively quick one. Now with make, make someone do something. Kathy made her son do his homework. Okay, so Kathy was the one that obliged her son to do his homework. Let, let someone do something. The boss let us go home early. The verb let means to permit or to allow. So the boss was the one that gave the permission, such as, hey, we get to go home because the boss gave us permission to. He let 
us. All right. And the last and the well, well, yeah, I guess you could just break this down. Um, yeah. So here we go. Something like this. You will hear. Oh, let's see here. It says uh, number one. OK. Male number one. Did you speak to the head of the department? Female one. No, she had her assistant meet with me. OK, so did she get the opportunity to speak to the head of the, of the department? No, the assistant met with her instead. So if we get four answers, A would be she spoke to the head of the department. Obviously not. She only spoke to the assistant. The head of the department had a meeting with her assistant. Absolutely not. We don't even know what the head of the department is doing. She met with the assistant to the head of the, uh, of the department. That's exactly what the answer is. And the assistant will soon become head of the department. It says nothing in regards to that. Right, so that is another one of those examples that I wanted to put down for you. And now the last one, used to, has two forms, right? So I don't want to, I, I don't want to like get complicated, but let's look at it in this context. I used to live in Australia, meaning at one point in my life I lived in Australia, but not anymore. Okay. Now another context it could be used is, oh, I finally got used to my new job. Meaning I've become familiar to my new job, such as, a, a, you know, a, what, what is it, acclimating and becoming accustomed to what I need to do on a routine basis. I got used to it. So this could be an example. Female one. What does Hank's father do for a living? Male number one. He's a salesman now, but he used to be a truck driver. So. You will read something like, okay, uh, what, what, did the, what did Hank's father do before he was a salesman? He once drove trucks, A is the answer. It didn't, doesn't say anything about him selling trucks. Uh, the main idea in C, it says his truck is still useful. We're talking about the action of his father, right? What, did he, what does he do now as opposed to before? And again, you will more than likely see he's accustomed to his job. So be very careful in terms of how used to is used, because at that point, these are the different types of, you know, th those are the types of answers that you will see. Two contexts that used to is being used. They will have both of them in each answer. So you need to understand, is this something that he used to do or is this something that he has become accustomed to? Now, let's go into another one. You will hear female number one. Nancy is working late again today. Male number one will say, yeah, but she must be getting used to it by now. Meaning she has become accustomed to working late. You will read, A, she probably has a more difficult job now. Wrong main idea. B, she once worked later than she does now. Wrong main idea. She, uh, C, she seldom works uh, I'm sorry, she seldom comes to work late. Wrong main idea. D is the answer. She is becoming accustomed to late hours at work. She's working late again today. Oh, she must be getting used to it by now. And that is how you break down the used to. So with that being said, we got different types of special verbs. Okay, we have the have, we have the get, we have the make, we have the let, and then we have two ways in which used to is used. You're going to have to master all of these so you don't <laughs> fall apart when it comes to the test. All right, so with that being said, this is the first video. Now in the second video, we're going to listen to dialogues and put everything that we just learned here in this segment to good use. I'll see you in the next video.